Watchman activations, what is that? Well, if you have the anointing, the mantle, the mandate, the mission to watch and pray, well, you got to practice. You know, we learn by practicing. And the more the Lord sees us pressing into our gift, the more he will reward us with revelation. The Bible says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So I have pulled from our Walking in the Watchman Anointing series, which is based on my best-selling book, The Making of a Watchman. I have pulled four Watchman activations. They're simple, watch them over and over again. They're coming up, pop, 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 one, two, three, four. And I wanna remind you, if you want to, there's dozens of these in the book, dozens of these in the book. You can get the book, The Making of a Watchman, on my website at jenniferleclair.org. Or if you prefer, you can get it directly from Amazon. It is a bestseller. People all over the world are getting activated in the Watchman Anointing. You can also take the whole series. There are like 19 classes in the Walking in the Watchman Anointing message. Uh, it's based on the book, but I go far beyond the book. This is what always happened. I'm prophesying, I'm doing all sorts of things in this course. Go to schoolofthespirit.tv slash watchmen, and you can get the book and the course uh, just for you. But press in now to these four activations. I hope that they help you. Let me know in the comments below uh, how they help you increase your watchman anointing. This activation is develop your crying out skills. And this has to do with warnings, with warnings. We need to develop our crying out skills. And so it, it, it goes back to releasing the warning, how you release the warning. Do you do it with diplomacy? Does it breed fear? Do you have the heart of the Father in it because God is love and everything he says and everything he does is motivated by love, even judgment and warning. Even his discipline is motivated by love. And so we see here in 1 and uh, 2 Samuel 18, 25, then the watchman cried out. What did the watchman do? Cried out. cried out. That's part of what you're called to do as a watchman is to cry out, to sound the alarm, to blow the trumpet. The watchman cried out and told the king, before you get to a place where you cry out to the king, you've got to cry out to some of your intercessors' friends to see how they receive the warning. In other words, before you cry out to the entire body of Christ, wisdom would dictate crying out to your pastor, crying out to some of your intercessory prayer friends. Test the delivery on them, unless it's going to happen immediately, unless it's going to happen instantaneously. There are some warnings, like the warning that I received about danger, danger, stranger, danger. It's coming, not coming from where you think. We talked about that in the past with regard to President Trump's son on the night before the inauguration that I was going into Washington, D.C. because I was invited to go. And uh, that was so urgent, I didn't have time to share it with anybody. But most of the time, you want to get good at crying out. You want to deliver the warning in a way in which people will receive it. Because if they don't receive it, guess what? Then that's your fault. If you were too brash, too bold, if you were too vague, if you were too ambiguous, if you left details out, if you put your opinion in it, then you're skewing how it's received. And then people won't respond to the warning that you release or to the cry you release. So get with some uh, intercessory prayer friends, get with your pastor and cry out to them first. Let them judge it and if necessary, help you shape your language before you report the warning to someone in authority. Here's the thing. Sometimes we just say, well, this is what I saw, blah, 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 and we blurt it out and that can scare people. Sometimes we forget to, what did I talk to you last week? We forget to look for the redemption of the Lord in it. And so sometimes we need help in how we're going to say something something. We're not changing a prophetic word of the Lord. I'm not talking about that. It's how are we going to deliver this warning in a way that will cause people's ears to perk up because it's laced with sobriety, the fear of the Lord and love rather than them shutting you out because you're not confident, you're not diplomatic, you're not, you're not delivering it in a, in a spirit in which they can receive it. And so if you lose credibility with a leader, you could wind up in a situation where people don't believe your warnings and bad things result from ignoring the warning. So crying the right way, crying out the right way is a skill. And for those of you watching online, this was all in chapter nine of the book, The Making of a Watchman. Hope you got that. I want to pray this prayer over you as part of our activation today. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us master the art of crying out. Help us move with a diplomatic spirit when diplomacy is required and with an urgent spirit when urgency is demanded. Teach us how to deliver a warning in the way people will hear it and act 
upon it. Somebody say amen. This activation is called watch over your household. Watch over your household. This is very practical. How many of you have a household? I click. We need to, you know, some of you I see, you need some help. Okay, watch over, I don't know, what is a household? Your house, your house, do you live in a house? A condo, an apartment. In your household, you are the gatekeeper. You're the gatekeeper. You have authority in your house. Nobody else has authority in your house unless you give it to them. You're the gatekeeper. You decide what comes in. Unless you have teenagers. God help you, Jesus, if you got teenagers. You got a whole mess right there if you got teenagers. Because they're bringing in all kind of ungodly stuff. And sometimes you can hear it in their room, you know, some kind of nasty, wicked. But generally speaking, you do. You decide what comes in. You didn't catch my daughter bringing in that junk in my house. Mm -mm. The enemy, 1 Peter 5 eight. the enemy is roaming about like a lion seeking someone to devour. And so you must watch over your household and keep the gates locked to approaching enemies. Now, what's really interesting is when Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall, Sambalot and Tobias and all these others, they were harassing Nehemiah and his people. And Nehemiah, at one point, even after they had the, 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 they had the gut gates hung, he said, you know what? Leave the gates closed even in the day because we are targets of attack. So leave, leave, this close the gates. And then some of you need to have a season in your house where you close the gates to other people coming in. Some of you need to do a spiritual house cleaning. And some of you need to begin to understand that you are the gatekeeper. You decide what comes in and what comes out. Proverbs 31, 27 says this, she watches over the ways of her household and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Hmm. So as watchmen, listen, if you can't watch over your household, how can the Lord trust us to watch over his household? So one of your first assignments as a watchman is to get really good at watching over your household. Some of you do. You need to cleanse your home from evil. You know, maybe it's not your fault. When I moved into uh, my condo, there was these Jezebel comic books in the drawer that I, it's the only drawer in the house I didn't check. I couldn't see it. It was a hidden drawer and I couldn't sleep at night. I was up all night, woke up with a headache and I'm like, what in the world is going on here? And then I was on the prayer call one morning and I said, you know, I, I, had, to, I had to write something down. Lord, show me something. And I was looking for a pen. I started scrambling around and I found that hidden drawer looking for a pen. And there was these evil, wicked Jezebel comic books in there. I mean, it was nasty. And I had to get those out of my house. And when I did, all the headaches stopped, all the insomnia stopped, right? So sometimes it's not your fault, but you need to watch over your household, what you let into your household. That means what media do you watch? Hmm. Because you can watch the, the, the Super Bowl and they got some perverse commercials on the Super Bowl. So what are you going to do? Turn it off during the commercials, right? But I mean, it's a serious thing. So you need to watch over your house. If you can't watch over your household, how can God trust you with larger assignments? There's the activation prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to watch over the ways of our household. Like the woman in Proverbs 31. Help us to squash enemy attempts to infiltrate our home with accursed objects, gossip, foul entertainment, or dark powers in the atmosphere. Help us teach others in our household to watch and pray so that our dwelling is secure and filled with your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. There's, there's a lot of activations in the book. I'm not teaching a whole class on activations because that would be redundant. But there is one activation if you want to do this. It's called Go About the City go about the city. And the Bible speaks of watchmen that go about the city. We taught on that two weeks ago. Watchmen that go about the city. It's in Song of Solomon 3, verse 3 and, verse, and 5, verse 7. And you may have heard of prayer walking, right? And we've done that. We went out with the group and we prayer walked around Fort Lauderdale Beach where all of the uh, uh, you know, drunkenness and prostitutes and everything were out there. Um, but, you know, you can also do prayer, prayer watching just the same. You can drive around your city and begin to watch. Drive around your city and ask the Lord, you know, what do you want me to see here? You know, give me a burden for my city. Help me to see the demon powers that are thwarting salvation in my city, right? Help me to see the issues in my city. Help me to see you moving in my city. You can drive around and do that. And I believe that because you're 
serious about it, the Lord will show you things. You can do it day or night. You can go by, you can, you can, you can do whenever you want. And this activation, uh, in my book, there are like dozens of activations. So if you really want to begin to put into practice things that you've been taught uh, on a greater scale, go for the book and get the activations. Uh, but this one is called Watch at the Gates of the City. And I love this one. Proverbs 8.34 says this, Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. So there's gates in any kind of city, any city around the world, there are gates and some watchmen are assigned to the gates. So then you ask, well, what are the gates? Well, think about it practically before you think about it spiritually. The gates are like the seaports. It's where things come in and out of the city or where major decisions are made that affect the city. So a gate would be an airport. We've gone on strikes around the airport in the past. The gate would be uh, you know, like courthouses, like the federal courthouse. And uh, we've stood before the courthouses and we've prayed uh, at times. Many times we've done that uh, because this is where things come in and go out. Uh, major universities can be gates because this is where knowledge is transferred for to the next generation. So it's major places of influence where minds are being molded, where things are coming in and out. These are the gates. And so there's also godly gates. It's not all dark things that we're waiting for and watching for. There are godly gates. And we see this here in Psalm 24, verse seven, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. So we should be watching for evil at the gates, but we should also be watching for the activity of the Holy Spirit at the gates. And so if you want to do this exercise, what you do is we've done this at the airport. You can go to the airport and just, and just walk around, you know, uh, not inside where the passengers are, but you know, even around the perimeter, you can go in front of a courthouse. You can prayer walk around a university and ask the Lord to show you what the enemy is up to and ask the Lord to show you what he wants to do wherever it is that you're standing. And God will, as you practice these things, he will reward you because he demonstrates based on your hunger. He demonstrates based on your diligence. He's not sending you on a wild goose chase. He wants you to learn these principles. The Bible says the gates, the, 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 the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So there's a lot of very rich scripture teaching about the gates and even gatekeepers, which is another, another teaching. But go and find a gate of the city and and watch at the gates and find out, Lord, what do you want to do here? And what is the enemy trying to do? And like I said, there's like another couple dozen activations in the book. Let's pray this activation prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us discern the spiritual gates of our city. Help us understand the dynamics and importance of the gates and gatekeepers so we can partner together to shut down the enemy's plans. Help us see the coming of the king into our midst so we can welcome him in as the king of glory in Jesus' name. Amen. After Chuck Pierce prophesied a new watchman movement, we saw a new generation of watchmen arising. Now, they need to get equipped. If you want to understand the times and seasons, if, if you're tired of getting blindsided by the enemy, if Jesus' words, watch and pray, inspire you, this is for you. While many people reject watchmen, God is putting a spotlight on this critical ministry of both warning and hope. I'm sharing scriptural revelation and practical experience over two decades of standing in the office of a watchman in the nations. You will learn how to operate in this ministry to see what the enemy is doing and announce the coming of the king. You're gonna learn the critical role of the watchman, how to discern if you're being called as a watchman, protocols for releasing words of warning paired with words of hope, practical prayers, exercises, and activations for operating as a watchman and so much more. Pick up your copy of The Making of a Watchman by Jennifer LeClaire today.